Jacks. Hugh Jackman's in this, right? <laughs> yeah, no, this is the, the Guillermo del Toro movie, right? Right. We got a screener of Guillermo del Toro's new movie. It's called Elysium. Star. It's uh, called Elysium, starring Will Smith and his son Jada Pinkett. Two men, <laughs> two machines, two wild robot jocks, the massive killing machines of the future, driven from the inside by the world's greatest warriors. These incredible robot gladiators use their awesome size and computer weapons to fight each other to the death. Climb in the cockpit of a giant killer robot and take on the enemy in the war of the future. Yep. No, that's yeah, not that's where right. that is. Just magically appears from the middle of the, uh, the hovercraft. Yeah, it's good. Go with it. That's good. <laughs> Looks fine. We can't afford to redo it. No. For a rematch. Yeah! Won't wake your mind. i kill you dead. <laughs> you got the problem. You got the problem. <laughs> All the peoples of the world gather together because like, hey, we shouldn't fight for territory. We should just fight because it's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> After this, they're going to be like, fuck this. We're going back to wars. <laughs> <laughs> I would think wars would be much less expensive <laughs> than constantly having to build new giant robots. 50 classic features, sci-fi invasion. 50 movies in one box that you know they're all quality. Every last one of them. We're going to watch one of them today. Its name is Rotor. It doesn't come with a thing on the back, so Jay printed it's, it There's a list of 50 movies that's what it comes with. I'm going to pretend I'm reading it from the back. <laughs> it's on this piece of paper. <clears throat> Robotic Officer Tactical Operation Research. Rotor. Rotor. A prototype robot intended for crime combat escapes from the development lab and goes on a killing rampage. All right, that's it. Oh, what's that? What the hell? <sighs> it was just daylight out, right? Yes. Yeah. The research team from our sister facility in LA. He's got a little police cap. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's Robert Cop. <Kopp>. Right <laughs> there. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Gonna get hot. No. Yeah, now it's gonna get hot. Just let's shoot this entire scene from really far away in one angle. Uh, no. Really? That's it. Really? That's your exciting action scene. Fuck you, movie. So, what started out as an innocent attempt to watch some bad movies with robots in them has turned out to be the most miserable experience in any of our lives. Yes. Is that accurate? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, we, we should explain what happened is we wanted to watch some bad movies with robots in them. Um, Perfectly logical. Yeah, because why not? Because robots are fun. Yeah. And there's there fun robots. B movies with robots. But uh, we found two. One that was one of the worst things ever made, which is noteworthy and interesting. Mm -hmm. One which was, uh, in my opinion, a genuinely enjoyable B-movie. Our attempt to find a third movie uh, ended in disaster three times in a row. Yes. Yeah. We, we started with The Vindicator. We started with The Vindicator. Who are you? Are you from outer space? Um, yes. <laughs> you know the Vindicator kind of bills itself as a modern day Frankenstein with robots, but it's more like a revenge movie with robots where this guy gets stuck in a robot suit, 
after a scientist put his brain in the robot body, he wants his wife back, kills the guys who put him in a robot suit, the movie ends. And it's, it's, it's just enjoyable enough, but it's just not much to talk about. The noteworthy thing about The Vindicator is that the suit was made by Stan Winston. Oh, and it, yeah. And it looks like something he slapped together in a weekend. And Pam Greer yeah, was good in it. Pam Greer is in it. It, it is uh, a Saturday afternoon special at best. Yeah. It is something incredibly predictable, bland. There, there's nothing more we can say to criticize or praise it. No! That's, it's not to say it's even horrible, though. I no, mean, it's not horrible. You, 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 That's the problem. It's yeah. out there. I have no control. They've made me kill. Now listen carefully. You've got to get to Bert. Tell him to meet me tonight at the old art warehouse. Just do it, Lauren, and then leave this city immediately. I want you to get as far away as you can. You're behind me, aren't you? <laughs> It may, okay, we can call this movie a C plus. Okay. I'd go I'd go C minus. Well, C minus is. Well, that's a, a, worse straight, than C minus. Straight C. Straight, straight C. C. Okay. Straight okay. plain C. There is nothing worse than middle of the road. So we watched The Vindicator. We were horribly fucking bored. And thankfully, well, I guess I don't know if thankfully is the right word, but we had a technical we had a technical issue where uh, we shot the episode with The Vindicator and two other movies, and there was an audio issue. So now we have to reshoot the episode. And we say, okay, well, let's try and replace The Vindicator with a more interesting movie. So you took suggestions from the Red Letter Media uh, Facebook. We, we looked through what we had as the archive, and you went shopping. Right. Uh, the, the important thing to say to mention is that I did not pay any attention to any of the suggestions that were given to me. <laughs> I just found things. Um, so the next movie that I found on VHS was Class of 1999 2. In the future, all teachers are cyborgs. That sounds fun to me. Uh, the problem being that we tried to put the tape in the VCR and it... It, it just fell off. It, the, the, the thing fell off, it wouldn't rewind, and it wouldn't play. So Class of 1999-2 was out. Uh, and then we tried a third movie. I, I stopped paying any kind of attention a long time ago. I don't know what's going on. You knew what I did when you married me. No. You were an investigator when I married you, not, not a bodyguard. She is acting. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, this is how normal people speak and move. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you got bored with Cybertracker while Jack was reading the box. I couldn't even pay attention to Jack reading the back of the box. Yeah. In the future. Unstoppable androids called cyber trackers hunt down vicious criminals and execute them on the spot. When Secret Service agent Eric Phillips Wilson crosses the wrong people, he's framed for a murder and marked for death. You know the good thing about this movie? Oh, it sounds like the most original movie ever. <laughs> this movie is full of original and unique ideas, just what Hollywood needs. Maybe we should have stopped there. No, we this, probably should this have. had promise, and much like Vindicator, this had promise because, you know, the box art is crazy cheesy. They're clearly ripping off major Hollywood blockbusters with not as much budget. And right. so this is prime, this is prime fodder for a terrible movie. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, it's a terribly boring movie. Yeah. This movie was so boring, we were talking about completely random things to keep ourselves interested. Like, do you ever, do you play emulators? Do you play like, you know, do you have a NES emulator? Yeah. yeah. It's not the same. Like, the game moves differently. I don't have that problem with emulators. I, I'm fine with them. Does anyone remember a show, I think it was on HBO, maybe Showtime, it didn't last very long, maybe one season, called uh, Perversions of Science? 
We, we started talking about the Terminator franchise Superman. and Superman. Oh, well, by that time we were talking about Superman 3 and, and how interesting the robots were in Superman 3. Are there robots in Superman 3? Yeah. The black well, blue robots. cyborgs. It's pretty awesome. We should watch Superman Electronics 3. like fly out of the computer and they attach themselves. They do this, this whole like backwards electronics. Then she's like a robot. Mesh onto people. Oh, wow. Really well, we, maybe we should at some point in the future do Superman 3 and definitely Superman 4. But Cyber Tracker's so bad, we're now talking about <laughs> Superman 3 during again. the discussion of Cyber Tracker. Fuck Cyber Tracker. Uh, so we're really only left with two movies. And, and thank God, I never thought I would say this in my life, <laughs> but thank God for a, a little movie called Rotor. Oh. But we'll get to Rotor. We'll talk about robot jocks first. This is a movie that uh, a surprising number of people have recommended to us since we started doing Best of the Worst. Um, Which now we had seen, or no. I had never seen Robot seen Jocks. I had seen Robot Jocks. I would never seen it either. I would never seen it, and it's surprising because I really like the director, Stuart Gordon. I don't know why people recommended this. This is not a bad movie. No. Well, that's It's a B people... movie, Yeah, but it's not bad. It's got a soft one. Oh, now it's a Stuart Gordon movie. Well, before we get into Robot Jocks, uh, Rich, why don't you explain the story of Robot Jocks? Okay, Robot Jocks takes place in a futuristic post-World War III world where people are just sick of war, and instead of having wars, they've said, you know, we'll just pick one guy from each country and they'll get into a fight with giant robots, and, and that will settle our disputes. Yeah. Well, war has been outlawed. War has been outlawed. Because so if, if you try to start a war, you're going you're to, to jail. jail. Because <laughs> you know what? War is illegal, yeah. and you have to respect that. Mm -hmm. So if you show up on somebody's doorstep with an army, yeah. you know what? You, you are going to the You podium. guys are all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the cop pulls oh, up on the cops. motorcycle. Yeah. All right, I, with me. I only have two pairs of handcuffs, so some of you guys are going to have to share. That, that's when he gets on the power trip. I'd like to see your ID. <laughs> uh, you're, uh, Russia. Oh. <laughs> well. So specifically, in, as far as the movie is concerned, they're fighting over Alaska. Yes. yes. Alaska is the disputed territory, and so they have the first big robot battle, which, as far as I'm concerned, is boring as shit. But <laughs> we'll get into them. <laughs> Alexander fires his fist missile. So Achilles tries to stop the fist missile from killing a couple people and ends up killing hundreds of people. He literally kills 300 people. Jay, his heart was in the right place. And, and sure, sure. And as a result, uh, everybody starts calling Achilles a coward because he says, I'm not going to robot fight anymore after this horrible disaster. That makes him a coward. And even though he's killed 300 people, everyone's like, that guy's a fucking pussy. Coward. 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 Meanwhile, uh, he, Achilles and his trainer are introduced to the new group of fighters who are grown in tubes. Tubers. Tubies. Tubers. Tubers. Tubies. Tubies. They are tubers. Tubies. And he immediately has conflict with them because they are robot-like, mechanistic, soulless, it's a thing. One of them is a lady, and she is very ambitious. So she's kind of, she's obviously the top of the class. Like she's the one that's not a fucking idiot that doesn't fall off the vibrating, strobing jungle gym. The children's jungle gym of death. Yes. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> 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 
And then even if you get to the top, the bar you're standing on will just give, Disappear. just go Relax. away and you'll fall through. <laughs> These test tube babies are probably expensive to create. <laughs> rather than have a strong person win, we'd rather uh, kill you. That shows you how much they care about their tubers. Tubies. <laughs> well, the, the, the lack of concern for humanity is, is one of the interesting things in this movie. It is. There's, there's a solid theme of that in yeah, there. Yeah, as we said while watching it, it's sort of like a... Uh, uh, Paul Verhoeven movie without the satire. Without the Paul Verhoeven. Well, that's, I think that's the only thing that, that keeps this movie from being great. I think yeah. if he directed this movie, it would have been if there as was, memorable as Robocop. If there was or more Total Recall. sort of like sarcastic humor, uh, satirical humor, like the opening scene where the, the robot falls on the crowd and, and they call him a coward. Like yeah. if you showed a news thing where they were like, uh, Achilles is a coward for not wanting to fight again. Over shots of people with like missing limbs. <laughs> and dead bodies, like that would have been amazing. Yeah. So it's it's a little more bland than that. And you but... start you start to wonder because Stuart Gordon is not a filmmaker that lacks edge. No. Generally speaking. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> and this movie is pretty much lacks the edge that it needs, whether it would yeah. be more satirical or more this... more over the top. Yeah. yeah. Which is amazing that I'm saying that a movie about fucking giant fighting robots isn't over the top. But they tried really hard to make a real science fiction movie. Yeah. And as a science fiction fan, I, I, I need to point out these details, okay? Uh, in the section after Achilles quits and he's, he's kind of going back home, okay? You see these uh, posters on the wall and they're like posters of women with babies or, or pregnant women. At first and, I was horribly confused of what yeah, this but, was, but later I figured it out. But it, it out. makes sense because after the, after the apocalypse, they're, they're trying to shore up the population. It's, it's propaganda posters yeah. to get women to have children. It's, it's pregnancy propaganda, yeah, it which is. is great. Well, look at you. We're just doing our part. <laughs> and then, and then she says, you know, they're celebrating Achilles coming home from the robot fight. Like, you know, it's a special dinner tonight. We're going to have meat. We're having real meat tonight to celebrate. Okay, uh, one sausage. <laughs> I agree that those are all really nice touches. They just weren't they weren't enough of them and they weren't as big of a deal as they could have been. Like if, like you said, if they would have been highlighted in a satirical way. But it, it's, it's world building. It, I, it well, makes everything a little bit richer. Th those particular things, I like that they're in the background. The, the problem with the movie is that it's called Robot Jocks. It's a movie about giant robots fighting each other for their countries. And yet there's a robot fight at the beginning of the movie. And then there isn't another robot fight until the goddamn end of the movie. Oh, in fact, it's two men, two machines, two fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is the same problem we had with New Gladiators, which yeah. is there should have been and we were kind of pulling it apart as we were watching it. It's just like, okay, this clearly should have been, there's the first fight where Achilles loses, Athena gets the second fight, she loses, and then Achilles has to come back and avenge her and America and get Alaska back. Yeah. And they just kind of took those last two and sort of just. Yeah, they pad out the middle. The, the middle of the movie drags a bit. And then, uh, and then <laughs> the middle of the movie drags a bit. Well, the problem is that the whole last third act of the it, movie is that kept, fight. Yeah. The fight goes on for a long time. It, it goes on for a while, but it's not terribly exciting. It's not as exciting as a giant robot fight should be. I have a big problem with stop motion animation. I never, stop motion animation looks so jerky and awful that it takes me out of any movie that I'm watching. It's, it's better than a guy in a clunky robot. Scene. I would yeah. rather have a Power Rangers cardboard box robot. You are so wrong. See, that's, I, I, a, that's one way you could take this movie though. You could do it in the Power Rangers uh, old school Godzilla style of guys in big costumes. Or you could do it what this movie was trying to do, and um, to a certain extent, I think, accomplished, which is trying to make the best movie they could with the limited budget they had. 
where they're stretching it as much as they can. And the opening shots of this movie, like the the over the opening credits, there's like scrolling across the landscape and then yeah. the robot foot comes down. And I do, I will say, I do like that they tried to make this a legitimate movie. They did the best they yeah. could yeah. to make this a, a, a high budget, high concept sci-fi movie. I mean, they can... did the best they could, yeah. and it's it's sort of like charming. Like, I, it makes me like the movie more, even though I didn't think it was that great of a movie. Where I'm just like, they really yeah. tried. It's, 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 it still does feel like it has a little more money behind it than the usual Empire Pictures movie. Yeah, like they gave it a little more, and like this was it. You this know, is like... higher budget than Ghoulies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in hell. Get it. See you in hell! So this attempt to find uh, fun robot bad movies has been a, a rough journey. It's been a rough adventure, but I think that all of it has been worth it for making us discover a little movie called Rotor. Speak, speak for yourself. You, know, you say speak for yourself, but I think I can speak for everybody when I say that Rotor is the best movie that's ever been made by anyone. It's the defining. <laughs> you fire me and I'll make more noise than two skeletons making love in a tin coffin, brother. I, I had to call the suicide prevention hotline last night because of Road Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Road Tour is. They told me to do it. <laughs> you call the senator and you tell him Road Tour walked through a busload of nuns to get to a jaywalker. Well, the interesting thing is that Road Tour is on the uh, Mill Creek 50 movie classic features sci fi invasion collection. Which is not, and I wouldn't use any of those words to describe Rotor. Yeah, it's a movie, kind of, but I just picked it on a whim, and it turned out to be one of the most fascinating bad movies I've ever seen. Um, uh, Rich, <laughs> why, I know it's your favorite, so why don't you ex explain Rotor? Uh, Rotor is a, about a police program to create a robot policeman who will execute people for minor traffic violations. <laughs> oh my god. Why is that text a different color? Because it's important. And it's about the, the angry mouthed scientist who is always agitated that built the robot. That's all, sir. Sorry, sir. Thanks. Sorry. Well, the thing is, the movie... <laughs> Calm down, everybody. We'll get to this. <laughs> the movie starts with scroll, very slowly scrolling text of exposition. Oh, God, that's right. It goes very, very slowly, and it tells you about how they're starting this program to make these robots. And then it cuts to uh, lingering, establishing shots of the city. Mm -hmm. And then we have more exposition it's delivered in voiceover. My name is Cold Iron. Barrett Gold Iron. I'm a captain with the Dallas Police Department in charge of their tactical operations lab. Because this, the text was not enough. The text was not <laughs> enough. Listen. So we do that and we establish the same thing we've already learned, pretty much. The day started just like any other day. A fresh October morning breeze blew across the ranch. And then we cut to establishing shots of a oh. farmhouse. This is riveting. Oh, you gotta get that whole pan in. Establishing shot, the movie! <laughs> <laughs> cut to establishing shot. Oh, cut to they, establishing they, shot. They, they, they had to establish the prairie yep. so they could establish the farm, yep. so they could establish the farmhouse, <laughs> so they could establish the kitchen counter. Yep. <laughs> It's morning! 
Each one of those shots goes on for 15 minutes. Yes. I, and this, you know what? It's just like what Ridley Scott was trying to do with the beginning of Alien. This movie felt to me like those papers that you wrote in high school. Mm. And those papers had to be two pages long, and so you made your font a little bit bigger, yeah. and you put a two-point spacing in between all you of them. You do 2.5. <laughs> That tricks them every time, because it's just a little bit wider. You just make everything a little bit bigger. So then finally, once it's established that he's a guy who lives in a farmhouse and has a coffee cup and pulling some carrots out of the fridge, and then he goes to <laughs> hang out with his friend, the horse. And his horse is way the fuck over there. Oh, yeah. And he's got to take his time just ambling on over there, and we need to see every goddamn step he takes to get up to the horse. I can run down hearts and never even look back. Who he ends up giving his coffee to and he eats the carrots. Which... Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> This all should have happened in 30 seconds. <laughs> so now, all this important information is out of the way. <laughs> I am so invested in this guy. Yeah, and then we discover that he is a guy that is uh, in the process of creating a robotic police officer. Um, this robotic police officer is not meant to be ready and active for another 25 years. Mm -hmm. To 50 years. 25 to 50 years. It's a long-term project. He's working on him now. Um, and apparently everyone in this world is convinced that in 25 years, the future will just be like a, a, a cesspool. <laughs> Everybody in this world is just completely nihilistic and pessimistic and thinks that the world in 25 years is gonna be the type of environment where a robotic police officer should just murder everybody for every minor <laughs> violation. Remember, mankind is bent on genocide, self-extermination. I'll show you the only remedy. And the best way to uh, uh, sort of let the investors in this project know that this is a good thing <laughs> is to show them a shitty eight millimeter film of a stop motion robot breakdancing. <laughs> uh, and doing some sweet taekwondo moves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I remember that. That was uh I love the video sledgehammer. <laughs> This movie just became worth it. We, we should say that we, very early on, we dubbed our protagonist uh, Back Problems. We decided we would call him that because he looks like he is in pain in every scene of this movie. He looks like he pulled his back out the night before and he had to act. And every line is delivered through his teeth. I gotta get out of here. Nuclear just jumped down my throat. He is exactly who I would cast as a brilliant police scientist. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So. He gets done with this meeting where it's like, hey, it's gonna take 25 to 50 years. Meet me in a year and I'll show you what I'm doing so far. And we'll see where we're at. And everyone in the meeting is totally cool with that. Like, yes. Yeah, cool. Taekwondo right. robot. I'm so invested in this. <laughs> it's so cool, dude. Show me some more animation next year. I'm gonna be into it. He goes back to his office. He gets a call from some sort of politician. Do you know who called me at 5 a.m. this morning? Well, I'll tell you who, doctor. Our benefactor, your meal ticket, Mr. Free Ride, as you must think of him, or Graham Reaper, as I think of him. Unfortunately, everything he's talking about could have been wrapped up in two, maybe three lines. Yeah. Instead, it goes on for 25 minutes. Guess what? You're going to have this shit done tomorrow. This is a, you know, a lot of condensation there. Yeah, you know, 25 to 50 years, you got to get that done in one day now. Now, why would he do that? For the same reason a dog licked itself, boy, because it can. Back Problems has the surprisingly correct idea, which is to just quit. <laughs> Be like, fuck this, I'm out. Yeah. Walks on his way out. He's talking to the head scientist guy. He's just like, guess what? Uh, you get the robot. It's got to be ready tomorrow. Bye! And he's like, oh man, I gotta finish this robot tomorrow. Come help me out. 
Robot cop. That's right. That's the and thing. Then robot cop comes we in. We get to meet the most important character oh, in this movie, which yeah. is sass talking robot cop. Oh boy. And he acts like he's so overworked. Robot, <laughs> yeah. robot cop is just constantly sighing, punching all the impulse codes. That'll activate the chain, and we can go down to the tank and trace the circuits by hand. What do you say? Yeah, cool. Right. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Never mind that. That's negative thinking. Think positive. Uh, well, I think we're positively crazy for even trying this. Uh, but, but as I said early on in the scene where we see the robotic understructure of what would become Rotor, I said we're not going to see that for the rest of the movie. Oh. I turned, it turned out to be accurate with that but yeah if you had robot cop with his little dumb police cap and rotor in robot form <laughs> fighting that is a movie <laughs> That's about that's that's your that's your climax. Yeah, it's just like it's just shot against like a back like a black background. You could have just matted it into anything. Yeah, and just like put him in there. I don't care. He's just. <laughs> <laughs> why don't Why don't we do it right now? <laughs> oh look, he's dancing. Oh, <laughs> look at that. oh, that's amazing. Oh. Shit, baby, slide me them seven digits. Look, Teeny Others isn't interested. <laughs> Meanwhile, after we've introduced uh, Scientist in Charge and Robot Cop, we cut down to the lab where uh, <laughs> sassy Indian black fellow is hitting on lady scientists? I don't even know who should be offended by this character. Everyone. <laughs> Another pale face grinding his heel in the poor Indian's face. I thank God my sainted ancestors gone off to the happy hunting grounds and ain't around to see this. He, he's got to take his headphones off so he can more accurately hit on this lady. Right. And then there's a spark, and then apparently that somehow cre uh, brings Rotor to life but, prematurely. Yeah. Rotor is not supposed to be developed for another 25 to 50 years, but he has his own locker. Just <laughs> Couldn't go around. Right around. No, no. In addition to having his own locker, Rotor has his own motorcycle. Even though he's not supposed to be ready for another 25 years, Rotor, they've already got a motorcycle designated to him. Even it's though all, and it's that roped off. Be, it's all set aside with velvet ropes. They have velvet ropes around it. Even <laughs> though when Rotor is ready, this motorcycle will be a junker. And the motorcycle has printed on it to judge and execute. <laughs> Rotor. Rotor. All of a sudden, there's a couple in a car. Oh, yes. And they're having an argument about marriage. Yeah. Uh, or... you, know, you know something, Josh? Guys don't want to get married, but ladies, ladies want to get married. All ladies want to get married. All guys do not want to get married. She wants to get married. He wants to go to IHOP. Right. <laughs> and that's the that's the importance of the scene. He's hungry. We get that in the first 10 seconds of the scene, but then the scene goes on for another 12 hours. For another uh, 15 minutes. So we're watching the scene and we're thinking like, "Oh, are these important characters? Where did they come from and why do we care about them now?" are tough. In fact, uh, I'm willing to bet you uh, 20 bucks that you're going to give me a ticket. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey! Rotor murdering traffic policemen. But Lady, who's still in the car, wasn't driving, didn't do anything, yeah. all of a sudden he's like, oh, I got to kill you too. Oh. Oh, no! 
turns are Rotor's only weakness. <laughs> okay, so this, this this robot was designed as a motorcycle cop. This is got a traffic cop. But he can't handle horns. But he can't handle horns. <laughs> Rich. This seems like a Here's catastrophic the design flaw. Ow, oh, horns. Well, ah. we also learn right after that that not only can he not handle horns, but he can't reach into cars very well. <laughs> That's right. He, he can do this. But he can't like like lean in, which is strange because in that that early video of the skeleton, he's bending all over he's, the place. He's very he's bending flexible. Like crazy. But you establish like okay, Rotor, he's he's a robotic police officer from the future that wants to, you know, very violently clean up the streets. Clean up the streets. Uh, he's going to murder a ton of people throughout this movie. He's just going to go after everybody. He doesn't. No. He kills this one guy, and then he spends the rest of the movie chasing this woman who didn't do anything. We also learn at this point in the movie that Rotor is kind of psychic. Sensor recall? Bullshit. What? It's an advanced recreation based on atmospheric disturbance. <laughs> and then Back Problems gets a call from Robot Cop. Yeah. And Robot Cop is telling, is telling Back Problems, like, uh, yeah, Rotor's out. Uh, it's a problem. Rotor's out. I see, Wilson. I'd like to take this opportunity to resign my position and leave. <laughs> 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 oh, and then Robot Cop resigns over the phone. Over the phone. <laughs> Not just resigns, like resigns in a very cowardly way where he goes, uh, I would like to tender my resignation. <laughs> the only interesting character in the movie just says, you know what, I'm done with this movie. Yeah. This is also the point where we discover that Everybody wants to kill Rotor, regardless of <laughs> if they know that he is a violent, psychotic robot from the future. Hey, you can't come in here like that. What? Did you try to stab a guy? A cop walks in the door and you try to stab him immediately, don't you know? He's got fake teeth. Again, like the scene is set up like a scene in, I don't know, Terminator or something. No. Very tense, very serious. She's trying to hide out. The, the uh, attacker comes in, but the cook has these comical buck teeth. For literally no reason. No reason other than the director said. They thought it was funny. They thought it was funny, but it's not appropriate at all. And it's not funny. <laughs> Come on up here, you'll be okay. Just sit right there, honey. Meanwhile, fucking a trucker is there. The trucker threatens Rotor. Rotor shoots the trucker. The trucker shoots Rotor. So Rotor finally has an injury. And then Back Problems shows up. Let's re <laughs> remember him? That guy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, where we're at right now, things have been... <laughs> let, me, let me get my map. No, we're at, a, we're at a really good point here because think, this is where Rotor goes from inept to off the goddamn rails. <laughs> help me, Sonya. Help me help you. This thing, Rotor, is on a rampage. If he stays after you, he won't go off on a killing spree. After uh, after back problem says bait says sends bait lady off to be bait, he's just like just keep driving, go to this place. It'll take you a few hours. Just keep him going, and then he gets on his uh, car phone, which <laughs> came out of someone's kitchen, which looks like a kitchen phone, <laughs> and he calls Houston. Yes, <laughs> he's like move, 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 move Houston. Unfortunately, and Houston wasn't home at the time. <laughs> he gets he gets the answering machine of Houston. <laughs> Welcome to the machine. Leave the name, leave the number. If this is Dr. Corin Steele, I'm Barrett Coldiron. It's 5.45 a.m. We've never met, but I need you. And while he's leaving the message, the door opens, and this huge fucking muscular lady with a bag and a fucking, fucking skunk hairdo yeah. walks in and she's like, blah. We have no idea who he's talking to, who he's trying to get in touch with. Is it Skunk Lady? We don't know yet. It well, it turns out it it's the Skunk Lady, but 
We don't know who Skunk Lady is. And it turns out they, she played a fairly significant role in the design of Rotor. Yeah. yeah. Even was, though they never met. They've never yeah. met, never spoken. Apparently they know each other's work. Right. When she finally, when she shows up at the airport, and she's wearing a, you know, like a womanly sort of dress. Now she's wearing an ugly dress. Now she looks like a middle school teacher. What is happening? <laughs> so now we're at the conclusion where they have random lady that is apparently an important character oh. is just driving around. No, no, no. Sorry, we've got more. Something happened oh in the hotel God. room, right? Yeah, there's more we yeah. gotta do yet because they go from the airport to the hotel. Oh yeah, shit. <laughs> Remember what I said at Rotor's christening? Fucking back problems just goes to look out the window and have a little soliloquy. Yeah. About like, were well, we playing God? Maybe that was a bad well, idea. That's where the movie introduces morals. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden he's having another fucking voiceover flashback because they're cutting the Rotor driving around his motorcycle. And, the, and then he turns back around and the muscle lady is in like camo pants and a black tank top and she's like, let's get the fucker. <laughs> and you would have thought like these guys worked on the design of Rotor. They know how his little intricacies work. Like maybe there's some sort of like like radio frequency thing they can blast at him or something or this or that. It's like, no, the plan is just to beat the shit out of him. The, the plan is to shotgun him to yeah. death. So they, they follow Lady. Bait Lady. Bait Lady, that is apparently a character. They follow her. <laughs> well, this is after she just stops the car, runs out of the car. Oh, the she stops the car. She's just... Bait Lady stops the car because Rotor, chasing her Rotor is chasing her. She gets out of the car and she just runs into the woods for no reason. <laughs> and then uh, Rotor, of course, follows her and then uh, back problems and skunk lady show up. Go away from me. I don't want to live anymore. Ow. <laughs> that was so awkward. Also, so so for a normal sci-fi movie, what's what's the ending supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be the big climactic battle between good and evil. Right. Oh, look at the action sequence! Like, <laughs> in the background! Dude. Wait a minute, did I shoot this as a joke? Because that's what I would do. Yeah, this it's is like a Sucker Brothers gag. It is. That is, that's a gag! So Skunk Lady dies. Yeah, she gets electrocuted. She, she gets dies. electrocuted. Oh! oh, oh, oh. What? What? Why? 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 Why did Because it looked too bad. Maybe. Uh, no, that looked pretty. That was fine. Oh, oh no, that's bad. electrocution, remember? Oh. oh, she died. She got electrocuted. Okay. They lasso. Back, uh, problems. back problems lassos Rotor. Yeah. One of those ropes is connected to the. Uh, the right, but we don't know where the other ones are going. It's just off camera somewhere. Yeah, Rotor has four ropes to him. Yeah, Rotor is suddenly tied up. Back problems only through from one location. Yeah. Right. Oh, what? 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 He just blew up? He just blew up. That's what happens when you... Again. What? Why did he blow up? As as I've said, the, the ending is like the Blues Mobile. Okay? <laughs> yes. Okay. It, it gets to the Daily Plaza and it just falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. We have robot jocks, which is, um, I, I know you don't quite agree, but as far as I'm concerned, genuinely enjoyable B-movie. Not so bad it's funny, not so bad it's good. It's a genuinely enjoyable B-movie. And then you have Rotor, which is, one of the worst fucking things ever made by anyone ever. So how do you rate something like this as best of the worst? I, I can't in good conscience pick either. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because, because Robot Jocks, I mean, that, that's genuinely a good movie. It's not, not great, but it's genuinely good. Yeah, they're trying to make a and real movie. I'm not willing to call Rotor the, the best of anything. <laughs> It's, it's, it's terrible. All, it's terrible. All you have to do is, whilst you're editing these, look at the time codes for how long we talked about each We talked about Rotor for four hours. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And so if you're talking about entertainment bang for your buck, yeah. Rotor gets the 
fucking clock. Would you call it entertainment? It's 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 dissection. <laughs> this is like this is like being in a lab and you've got the lab coat on. You're you're taking apart the movie with a scalpel when you're looking at it. No, it's not. This it's, this doesn't make any sense. But you sense. know what? I would rather do that than just go. The the only thing I can say for sure is I would like to destroy Cyber Tracker. <laughs> Because that movie has no value, good or bad. Cyber Tracker has a problem. It's gonna die. We didn't even get to watch this movie. But fuck it, but we decided fuck it. Baby. Tickets to ride, white line highway, tell all your friends, they can go my way, pay your toll.